Welcome back to Go With Your Palette. Got Joe Wagner here, Chris Rubio, Fat Mario right there. How you doing Yo, this yo, yo. Doing Today, good. whatever. Yeah. I'm just getting my, you know, you know the usual. You catch up well from uh, Daylight <laughs> Savings? It's the last time we ever do this. Dude. Is Spring it? Forward? Wait, is it really? Yep. Okay. Yeah. We're for sure? We're done? For sure. Well, I don't know. I don't trust politicians. You... I'll, I mean, you know, they might they might have something in their back pocket like, Haha, just kidding, we're still falling back. <laughs> that's, what, yeah. that's what I was thinking. Are you are, are you are you down with it? I am down with it. Yeah. Yeah. You've been upset about it for like a while, I think. I never understood why. And if you look at the, <laughs> if you look at the history, you're like, it it none of the historical aspects ever really make sense as to why we did it. My favorite was like it was some you know farmer up in New York or something that was like trying to maximize, or he was a biologist or something. He was trying to maximize daylight for his, you know, treasure hunting through the forest. Um, yeah. Anywho, so what do we got today? Uh, a little wine making stuff. Yeah. Maybe some just like fuck around stuff. Yeah. I yeah. mean, kind of like what we do. But hey, dude, like let's talk. I thought we would actually talk about because we just recently saw. Um, we just recently saw Cocaine Bear. Yes, we did. <laughs> <laughs> Which, dude? I mean, Academy Award. I definitely, think. definitely in the running. I think. Yeah. <laughs> so, what'd you think, bro? Like, what'd you think? So, is that, that's based on a true story, right? Like, in first of all, I think it's definitely a family-friendly movie. Okay. <laughs> Brought some of the kids. Wait, 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 wait. Before we, okay, I, I want to say this, and we'll have it on this screen, but there's gonna be some spoiler alerts. Like this, I just oh, want to spoiler oh, yeah, yeah. alert this. I, just, yeah. I don't want people to get all like. I'll been out of shape well, when why we start, we start talking with, about start with this because when it comes to movies I always think like is this a movie worth watching in the theater or do you just wait for it to come out yeah was it a movie oh. was it was it a movie or a movie theater worthy <laughs> flick Dude, I think I think it's actually the one in my opinion I think it's like the one that you have to see in the theater okay right I mean there was a lot of aggressive stuff in there I liked I liked the kind of uh uh the the fake comedic goriness like it was gory a shit. leg just like flies over <laughs> dude there was like what about the intestines just eating like spaghetti oh, it just god. came out it was yeah. like it was, like sausage leagues it, was... it did oh my gosh we're Those probably are... i mean <laughs> that, that was a really big intestine i mean that's usually like that looked like a large intestine but the yeah. length of a small hey intestine. i know you're i know you're a wilderness dude though like do you have you like ever come across like a bear mm, yeah on actually, cocaine yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on cocaine. No. But no. you have? Yeah, yeah, I did. Uh, twice. Um, the closest was uh, in Wyoming. Whoa. And it was like, a, it was a juvenile, so like not huge. And he was maybe like 50 feet ahead of us. And yeah. so it was like, like everybody stop and just step back. Like there might be a mama bear around. And oh. that's what I've always heard. You don't fuck with a mama. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. don't fuck with the mama bear. And there's something that came up in coca uh, Cocaine Bear where they were talking about, it was like, if it's a black bear, you fight, and if it's a brown bear, you lay down. There was like some kind of like rhyme that happened, but I think that was like the the whole like point of it. It's like black attack. Yes. Brown, lay down. Yes. I think I think that's it. Yeah. I had like I don't know. I just like never had heard that before. I'm like, is that? I think I think that is. I would actually go with that advice. Okay, so you're saying like, you know, if you, you know see the... if you come across and you see a black bear, you're just like, dude, I got to fucking, <laughs> hey. Hey, dude, it's done. It's on right now. <laughs> and he was like, I so, guess he had to brawl. So would you hit a black bear? Would I hit a black bear? Yeah. I mean. It, yeah, if you had to? Yeah. Would you hit a female black bear? Dude, I don't think I would have time to like really like <laughs> figure that out. I don't think I'd be like, excuse me. Like, would you feel you, bad if you found <laughs> out there was a, a lady bear after you hit it? <laughs> Would I feel bad? Yeah. If I fucking lived? No, dude. So, I would just be so happy that okay I survived. A bear? I'm just to saying. To survive. I'm just saying. Yeah. Oh, okay. You said wait, it. hold you on said a second. It. Wait, wait, I like this. I this like this. Be, I like this. this Can is we talk be about this? accessible for everyone. You like to do this. So you're telling me <laughs> you would just actually, like, just take it? You'd lay down and die? You'd let it rip you up? No, I'd probably like, give her some treats or something. Butter oh, or Oh, yeah. I'm sure yeah. that works. Yeah. Yeah. Like flowers I don't know, or cocaine. Cocaine, yeah. <laughs> cocaine, I'm sure, would really do the trick <laughs> for like five minutes and then it'll kill you. Okay, I mean, we didn't really like spoil it. I think it was it was a fun ride. It was gory as shit. Um, it was well. I mean, the one spoiler thing though was like it would surprise me is that like kids they had like got actually kids ingest cocaine in that movie. I was like pretty surprised. Ah, uh, yeah, they like eat like a giant like, like volume kid, of cocaine. Yeah, yeah. And you were just you're like wow. All right, I know where this is going. But okay, so yeah, so just I'd sum say it good up. Movie. What, good movie. What's what's the it. rating? What's the rating? Like from from the movie from like Pinot Grige. <laughs> 
which you love. That's like the one for you, right? Yeah, that's mine. That's my That's your low point. Yeah. That's my low point. <laughs> the Pinot Noir. <laughs> okay. What what what's the scale or what how many wine glasses? I don't know. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like out of like I'm gonna go out of ten. Okay, I give I'd it take... like a seven. Okay. Solid. And must see in the theater. I think you should see it in the theater. Absolutely. Yeah. All it's, right. The the experience is better. You get the popcorn, the hot dogs, the candy. And there's nothing better than like movie theater popcorn and butter. Dude, it's, I yeah. I I ate like I just want to say I, I ate like a way too much nacho cheese. <laughs> I have a problem with nacho cheese. You got to thank Rachel for that because yeah. she goes and buys like the extra, and it's like two dollars and fifty cents for the extra pack of nacho cheese. Yeah, and she'll just like load up on them. She dips her popcorn in nacho cheese. Dude, we're, she's like my nacho homie though, <laughs> because like we <laughs> we just like sat next to each other. It's like it's like first I have like the hot dog right. You may put a Did little you put nacho, nacho cheese, cheese on the hot dog? Oh, there's a little nacho cheese. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And then you're like, oh, okay, next I have my nachos. Well, come on. You're going to get the nacho cheese on the nachos. Otherwise, sense. they're not nachos. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep. So, and then it's like you still have some nacho cheese left, and then there's popcorn. You're like, well, you know, I'm going to dip the popcorn in the nacho cheese. Next thing you know, you got like two containers of nacho cheese you've gone and through. You're and you're licking the like, little bits out of the bottom of the can. You know, <laughs> you're like, what's <laughs> happening to me? <laughs> <laughs> hey, some people, you know, they got you got your addictions, you know. Yeah, it's not cocaine; it's nacho cheese. Just like I think it's a much healthier in many ways. Well, addiction. yeah. I mean, I mean, if you were eating that much then every it hits day you at night, you know, yeah, you're like, mm, that was <laughs> gonna, that's gonna hurt. Go to Taco Bell. And you're yeah. like, I'm looking for a number three with a side of heartburn. And maybe two days worth of diarrhea. <laughs> Could you do that for me? Like, I, yeah, here's a Crunchwrap <laughs> Supreme. It's got nacho cheese in it. Thanks. Diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> I love that we could have an intro. So, like, that's a good thing to start off with is like, you know, nacho cheese and diarrhea. Yeah. I think it's a good one. Uh, so, <laughs> oh, but so, okay. But, but okay. It. So, this is, this is what I love about the movie. Yeah. Based off a true story, right? Yeah. Some drug smuggler, smuggler actually, like, ditched all of his shit in the yes. woods. Yeah. And then jumped out of a plane. Yep. And his shoot didn't open somehow whatever happened I, i'm not going to spoil this part because that, that opening scene was like a perfect <laughs> fucking yeah. opening scene i thought it was hilarious yeah so anyways he ends up hitting the ground dying and then somebody finds him but the cocaine is like strewn all throughout the forest yes anyway so the story goes that a bear finds it and ingests like a ton of it a ton, and becomes yeah. addicted and uh and and so yeah in the movie um the, just a little they they hollywooded the story just a touch you know I mean, I could definitely believe that like 98, 99% of that was absolutely the truth. Just as. Oh, yeah. You think, dude? <laughs> you fucking think, dude? Like, I don't know. There was like no OD. Like, dude, if that bear was just ingesting bricks of fucking cocaine. It was just like. So, I, you know what I did here I, was the real story was that the, the bear did die of an overdose. Oh, wait. Really? Yeah. Oh. Kind of sad. It is kind of sad. But that's why, hey, kids, don't do drugs. It was shit happens, and this is in the days before uh, what's the shit they put in it now? Um, not ketamine, uh, fentanyl. Fentanyl. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So that's like, dude. I that's a scary thing. Like that's like that's real. A lot of people are dying from it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that was like before fentanyl was around. Yeah, I think they yeah. need to bring that up though too. Like that, even bears are dying. Of even fentanyl. bears are dying of just <laughs> straight pure Colombian. Like cocaine. why do we care? And yeah, it's so like, yeah, they don't even. It's need time to the, do something. They don't even need <laughs> fentanyl. Yeah. I'm glad this movie brought awareness <laughs> to the fucking problem. All right, so I, I would Very recommend well. the movie in the All theaters. Right. Absolutely, All right. fucking hilarious. Um, if you like comedic gore, this and and comedy in general, but it's like it's a good one. Yeah, and Joe, they call it a thriller. I'm like, <laughs> this is not. I'm like not scared at all in this movie. I hope you enjoyed this movie review. Maybe there might be some more because Joe Joe he is an experienced movie critic. He's good. Um, you know, he he's the one to tell you like what movies you should watch. Kind of like a song. <laughs> Anyways, um, listen to me like and only got... me. <laughs> um, hey dude, so Wizard like Wizard of Oz was a masterpiece. <laughs> yeah. Um so dude, I'm like looking, you know, this room, I'm like nice wine barrels and stuff. I thought, hey, you know what? Why don't we just why don't we just dive into some wine barrel business? You know, it's always going on. We've done like a lot. You've done a lot on social with uh, wine barrels, and I find it, it's like always like really interesting. <laughs> I can know. I can tell by your face, bro. <laughs> you like love wine barrels. I do love I, wine we're barrels. We're trying to like. I'm gonna try. To, <laughs> like we're not. 
<laughs> we want to talk about it, but I, I feel like you could talk like we could do ten episodes. Well, okay. We th- talk- think about this. Like, where did the barrel come from? <laughs> Here we start. Please. No, this is like I, I, I mean, like it. No, yeah, I really okay, don't yeah. even know the story, but I'm, oh, I'm gonna make the Wait. assumption. <laughs> Right, you think you think that they were like, oh, let me put some wine in this wood cask to make it taste better. That's bullshit. Then they marketed it up. That was like during the time they didn't have anything else to put it in or like easily transport it. Yeah. And all of a sudden somebody's like, hmm, this oak tastes good with the wine that they just shipped from France up to the UK or whatever. Yeah. Like back in I don't know, probably sixteen, seventeen hundreds. And so then they're like, oh, we'll call it maturing and we'll sell our barrels for a lot more money. That was the French. Oh. <laughs> and then they started to toast them. <laughs> Anyways, I think it all happened by accident. I don't think there was actually like somebody sitting there thinking like, you know, this wine is missing something. What about some toasted oak? That's a great <laughs> idea. Like, who the fuck would come up with that? Okay, wait. So since you're, okay, you're talking about like uh, oak. But I do oh. love barrels and they do help the wine. Yeah. Can we bring, I want to bring up like, like start off with a couple, because you got some good social stuff out there. I always like to bring light. People could go like check it out just to kind of launch this. Um, hey, Art, could you like bring up uh, the first video? So or... am I going to have to explain gaslighting on this video? <laughs> Wait, what? This right here Wait. is a brand new French oak barrel. Nicely built, sumptuous oak. Got the willow and the shiny hoops to just show it off a little bit more. Just like a brand new car. Every time we buy one of these, over $1,000 each, we put one drop of wine in it. Boom! We lose half of its value. Goddamn, they're <laughs> I wanted to like, kick it off that first of all, like the way you're describing that barrel, dude, bro. Like, were you like, I don't know, like you were kind of like they, you were kind of chubbed, right? They look like <laughs> they look like a. I was I was getting a chub, yeah. And, Especially when my hand touched that soft oak, just yeah. Well I, I, I actually really liked it. I like the passion in it. But no, it's a uh, yeah. Barrels are barrels are great, but uh, man, they do lose their value like right away. Yeah. Like you got you know. You got new and you got used. And I said that you lose half the value, right, when you put wine in it. You lose more than half the value. Like, you're probably looking at, you know, call it $1,000, $1,200 for a single barrel of French oak. Yeah. Like, good quality. And then you use it, like, one time. Even if you use it for, like, three months of aging, like a flash aging thing, um, you're probably only going to sell that for, I don't know, 200 250 a barrel. And then when they get really old, you're selling them for like fifteen dollars to somebody who's going to turn them into planters or furniture. Dang! So fifteen bucks. Fifteen bucks. Yeah, after a couple from, of years. From what's that? And with the from new barrel, like, say twelve hundred down to fifteen. Damn. Yeah. Damn. But those French, I guess, man, I can see a lot of big barrels. <laughs> okay, so this is what. Okay, so um, with this whole like new oak and. Um, so new, you have new new oak and used oak. Yeah. Right? And there's like percentages sometimes when you're getting the barrels. Like I was always kind of wondering about that. Yeah, people are always asking like, what percentage of new oak do you have? So like every wine starts at a, a different spot, right? Like Sauv Blanc, usually that won't even see oak. It'll be like in stainless steel ferment and then go to bottle. Um, because that's like a light, bright wine. But wines that go into oak, so say Pinot Noir or Cabernet, or Chardonnay can go either way. But uh, But... Pinot and Cab like generally do well with oak. They they allow the wine to micro oxygen uh, micro oxygenate and um, and absorb some of those characters, some of those like you know sweet wood tones that sort of thing. But um, overall, it it's it's like if you look at the percentage. Let me start with just like Cabernet. You might want to start at like sixty to eighty percent new, meaning that vintage is gonna go into some high percentage of new oak, and that's probably gonna reside in those barrels for about 18 to 24 months. And then you might do a flashing where you're like, okay, I want a little pop, and so you'll bring new barrels in and fill them for like two or three months, and then pull that wine out. But everything is reactive, so you kind of like start with a baseline of say 60%, and then start adding in more as you need it. Because if you overdo the new oak, then it's, you you know, you can't put the shit back in the horse, is what they say. Yeah. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> back to our sayings, dude. We're gonna do I need right to explain to... that saying, or do you understand that one? No, I, I, yeah, I think I, yeah, I understand. You can't yeah. put the shit yeah. back. Like you can't I, pull the oak out of the wine. I get it. I'm just wondering, there. like, where that came from. But anyways, that's okay. I, you know, I don't know the history of that one, but I can tell you that uh, it's very, it's very descriptive. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Meanwhile, shit. you're sitting there like envisioning some dude picking up just horse shit and trying to shove it up its ass. <laughs> like, <laughs> dude, 
probably get kicked. <laughs> like this episode, like this is like, dude, we're, how are we getting back to shit? Like we were just, we opened with diarrhea. You would have thought that oh, was God. enough. Maybe it's on my mind because see. Grizzly had some accidents <laughs> this weekend. Oh. Grizzly's like a little tiny white dog and he just like, I don't know what he ate, but he was just shitting all over the place. Oh, dude. It was a mess. Oh, man. It was a nightmare. I had to like clean all the couch cushions and stuff. Wait, but isn't he like, but you got him, you got him on that diet. I mean, we, we talked about this. He, like, he's on a diet, but I gave him some bones the other day and I think that that was like, he maybe got, you, what see, happened. you got him off the diet and you messed him up. Oh, I screwed him, him up. Yeah, it, well, how's Rocco? What do you mean? How's, he's not shitting all over the place. I'll tell you that. He's good. <laughs> um, all right, so you okay. can't put the shit back in the horse. So yeah. You want to start off with like a moderate percentage of new oak and then add in from there. What's going to be imparted is like, you know, mocha, vanilla, toastiness, a lot of those characters from new oak and then used oak, which could be, you know, used for three months, nine months, 24 months for a wine uh, where, it was, where it was filled up prior to. And it kind of has already sucked out all those characters from the wood, so you end up with something more neutral. Mm. And and that kind of honors the core of the wine itself. So you want to make sure you don't, like, overdo that with new oak. So um, Pinot is usually about 50%, 60% new oak because it's a lighter variety. Cab is usually 60 to 80 Some people do 100%. Some people do 200% where you age for, like, I mean, we do this, too, on, on some of our stuff, like our reserves. So it's 100% new oak, you know, for a year, and then you – take it out of that barrel and put it back into new um, new barrels for another year. So you get like 200% oak, new oak. Yeah. And you, you got to have a massive wine to be able to handle that. And it's not like something you do every year. Every year is different, so you kind of react. And all, but, and all varietals, would you say that you could potentially use oak? I mean, barrels. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I think, depending on your style, I mean, we make a Sauv Blanc that, that goes in a barrel. Yeah. And that's a totally different style. We call it Fumé Blanc. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that's uh, how you described it. It was like, instead of saying Sauve Blanc, everybody's thinking like it's going to be grassy and bright. You say Fumé Blanc, and it's like, ah, that's been in barrel. It's not like a legal, <laughs> it's not like a legal term. I think it's oh. just like what Wait, people okay. think of. So we okay. wanted, to, wanted to differentiate it. All right. Yeah. It sounds like, I don't know, a little bougie, <laughs> doesn't it? It sounds very Fumé. bougie. <laughs> sounds very bougie. Art, right, can you bring up uh, that second vid? Some of my favorite barrels to look at. Um, typically, obviously, we have the barrel heads that are made out of wood. We do a couple of these every year so that this we can dope. monitor exactly how our sediment, or what we call lees, is, uh, is, is reacting over the aging process. So here we have some Chardonnay. It's already through primary fermentation, just finishing up secondary, what we call ML fermentation. But as you can see here, there is a layer of this kind of like, you know, very fine Dude. sediment that yeah, has uh, uh, settled down to the bottom. The wine is a, a bit uh, turbid still, still has uh, uh, quite a bit of solids in it. Those will age out and fall out of suspension Everybody looks well. at me like cross-eyed when I see down the word turbid. This layer is this <laughs> like heavy right oh, yeah. of these very fine solids. These contribute oh, yeah, to nothing. Oh, yeah, I want to talk about that. All right, so, so, yeah, so turbidity is like... Turbidity. You, turbidity. Yeah. It's the word of the day. So, you like when you have solids in a liquid that you can still see, right? Yes. So it's not clear. Yeah. So, like, imagine mud. In water, yep, right. Got a little cl cloudiness to it. Yeah. Well, over time that'll drop out, but turbidity yeah. is how many solids are. There? Anyways, yeah. or like so, diarrhea, like water. But we want. Oh, sorry, I thought we, we... we want to do that video. <laughs> we want to do that video again for uh, for social media. <laughs> I'm gonna edit actually, that out. Like, show it mixing that up, because like what you saw in that video was just like a nice compacted layer at the bottom. So we're gonna do one where with those barrel heads you can see through. We're gonna do one where you like mix it up and you see all of that all that lees get back into suspension because you want that connection between. The lees, which are like the fine solids, and the wine to like build up the mouthfeel. Yeah. Um, and that that can be done in tank or barrel, but we do it in barrel. So that was a, a really cool. Like I loved having that glass head, so you can actually see what's going on. That's what I was gonna say for like those that um weren't able to be watching right now, but like that's what we were checking out was that that barrel with the transparent top, that yeah. transparent head, and that's like really cool. Is that has that been? A, Come to think of it, I like has transparent that been around tops. For? Yeah. Yeah. You do. Yeah, who needs who needs a wet t-shirt contest? Yeah. Are we? <laughs> <laughs> um, Transparent tops. Uh, yeah. So American oak is traditionally a little more aggressive from a structure standpoint, yeah. but it can have sweeter tones. So it depends on what you want to go for. I prefer French oak, which is much milder on the structure, and it takes a little longer to get those sweet tones out, but it's well worth it. Yeah. So we use like a little bit on like Zinfandel, Petit Syrah. We use a little bit of American, but like by and large, and in our spirits, we use quite a bit of American too. But 
um, by and large, our programs are like 98, 99% um, French. Okay. And, and then, and then, like they, they, you know, the French, they're artists, so like they make everything somewhat complicated and 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 sell the sell the romance, right? So, um, what they have are many different options. So you can do your traditional like fire bent, which is actually bent while it's toasting. Okay. To get into that shape. Um, other ways you have steam bent, which you know is supposed to reduce like any sort of breakage of the staves. And then water bent, same thing, but it also like pulls some of the the more um, aggressive characters out. So seeing some of those things um, from like the 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 you know building of a barrel standpoint, then you got heads. If you do toasted heads, it's like over thirty percent of your barrels your head. I like toasted heads, and then your toast level, your forest where it's you know where the wood is coming from. So there's all these different variables, and the only way to learn which one works for your wines is to to try them. Unfortunately. I mean, I'm glad you if brought. If you want to try all the variations, you're gonna probably spend like a hundred grand. It's, Dude, yeah. I'm glad you brought the wood because I thought about this. Like, so why 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 not like redwood? Oh, redwood actually. You know what's I, funny is like the old <laughs> the old fermenters is, around okay. here. Yeah. They used to be made out of, out of redwood. They didn't have so like what? they didn't have stainless tanks. Like even when like when my grandpa started making wine. Yeah. He was using all uh, wood fermenters. And they so, were like. They were all redwood, but redwood is like really porous. Yeah. And it doesn't really give off that much of a character, especially if you use it for like multiple okay. times. So they just become vessels and that's where he would ferment his wine. But you can use like for aging, if you want to get different characters, you can use like acacia. Uh, you could use teak. You see this stuff in spirits more than anything else. Okay. Like finishing and like teak wood or something. Because I feel like in wine, it's just, it's just oak. Like I'm, that's where I'm always hearing. Yeah. But... You're saying these other these other uh, woods that you could use. I mean, spirits is really exploring that. But. Yeah, spirits is definitely exploring. You could do it in wine. Like we're we're actually going to be doing. Um, we're going to try teak. Um, oh, whoa. for like a little little project. Is this like a? I mean, is this like a secret? Like, do I? Should uh, we tell like our listeners like not to say anything? Yeah, please don't say anything. It's a secret, is, dude. You're getting like the inside. No, you know, because what's teak. funny if I say this right now and then other producers are like, "Oh, that's a great idea," and if it turns out to be shit, yeah, then we all lose together. Yeah. So and all... you like that? You like you like no, camaraderie? We, they, <laughs> yeah, I feel I, like that. Feel... You know, like when you're like doing this shit. If we're on, gonna <laughs> fail, <laughs> let's fail together. When you're drenching yourself in wine or whatever, like on TikTok and stuff, you're just like, "Come on, why are you like be with me?" You know, or you're talking smack and. Uh, you yeah, know, it's all about the collaboration. Yeah, you're like, come on, everyone yeah. should just get out here. We should all just, you know, have fun and yeah, just do it all together. Except around. unless you're in in the banking world, then then don't follow suit with Silicon Valley. Can we? You said that we weren't going to talk I'm, I'm about not, this, I'm not bro. Talking about it. You said this. No, why? Why do you do this? I just wish that, like, dude, be fun. <laughs> what? No, what the right? Am I right? It's, all right, no, stop him. It, like, it, what it the? Is, it is their irresponsibility. <laughs> That is now going to force a bailout, which the government's not paying for it. We're <laughs> fucking paying for it. It's tax dollars. They already said they're not going to bail them out. They made it clear this morning. Oh, I, you just wait. Let it blow over, Art. Okay, well. Politics I'm not, is politics. Not... These guys are all a bunch of fucking Art, can you, can you bring up, like, the <laughs> video three, please? Please, for the sake of, uh... Is this not a, the, the whiskey versus... Yes, the whiskey. Right yeah, yeah, yeah. No, wait. All right, yeah, we, we won't talk about Silicon Valley Bank. But what no. I'm saying is if the ship is going down, don't go run into it with your ship. <laughs> Fucking banks. <laughs> it's the... Dude. Should I look up that saying too, Joe? No. <laughs> it's, the, it's, it's, the, it's the Instagram link, Art. All right, so... For video three. But I just want... Because I want to bring this video up because uh, it was it was a great uh, one to watch uh, when you did uh, whiskey barrels. Because we're talking about spirits and you're yeah. talking about... Um, them like they seem to be more in experimentation with with uh, using different wood and stuff like that yeah and so then I was like I was gonna bring up the video from when you know you were showing uh, oh when we, using... we brought one of the whiskey barrels <laughs> and put wine in it and totally fucked the wine up yeah I mean if you get <laughs> it's still if you can't in, bring it's it still up. sitting in that barrel I'm like oh here know. we wait, here we go here we go dude it's, this is great Oh yeah, we just need some uh, volume. This is a whiskey barrel. <laughs> this is American oak with a heavy char toast to it. So we're gonna see how this is panning out. Because oftentimes charcoal or heavy char can actually strip the wine. As you can see, the color's a little bit lighter in there. It's actually got a little more of a brown hue, but we can go ahead and taste it and see if it's done anything beneficial to the wine. Brown hue. Yeah. 
I wouldn't do that one again. <laughs> I mean, too much damage. <laughs> All right, no, I got another <laughs> another funny one. So I we uh we bought some used tequila barrels. Yeah. And oh, like I think whoa, we bought dude. we bought four used tequila barrels, right? So like, they like oftentimes spirits companies or whatever you're making, they'll sell to other companies to finish in like, you know, port barrels. Like that's a big thing, right? You finish your whiskey in port barrels. Yeah. It might only be like a month or three months or whatever, but like it imparts some character. So we get these um, tequila barrels, and we didn't do anything at the winery. But we brought them to the distillery and we, we put brandy, like fresh made brandy into these tequila barrels. And this is like probably 2015, 2016. They're still in barrel and they taste like fucking tequila, like straight up tequila. Like, I, yeah, I mean, like, I don't know how wet the barrels were when we received them. Like there was nothing in the bottom of them. There was no like standing tequila, but like there's still so much moisture in those staves. And so as you refill it, then everything starts to, you know, blend back in together and we just put a neutral I mean it wasn't neutral it was brandy but like it didn't have a lot of character yet because it hadn't seen barrel yeah they taste just like tequila so now so, imagine yourself going out there being like oh a brandy finished in tequila barrels that sounds fun and then you taste <laughs> and you're like this tastes like tequila this is tequila this is right tequila. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're like okay yeah so that was a that was like a fun experiment but hey you just kind of that you're not gonna move. I mean, you never know. That, like right? ten years, gonna... ten years ahead, like maybe we'll <laughs> taste it again and be like, "Yeah, this is like 18 years old. It's a uh, an 18 year old tequila brandy, <laughs> brandy tequila infusion. I don't know, but yeah. So you know, you got to try everything, <laughs> and uh, and then make your make your assessment and then move forward. But and yeah, you had like special requests. I thought this was interesting too. It was um, the one that we had on Instagram where it was uh, La Pata Negra. Oh, La Pata Negra. Yeah. yeah. So that was that was uh, John Lopez. He uh, he went out and okay. asked the Cooperages. So, Your, so, yeah. I'll, so what happens, I'll tell you first, is like you go, go to a forest, right? Yeah. And um, this is a, what a Cooperage would do. So a barrel maker would go to a forest or buy from a wood mill. But typically go to the forest, select your trees, cut the trees down, and then they, they coarsely um, saw cut them into staves, right? So you have like, they're not finished staves, but they're meant to stack. And they'll just do like, you know, like Lincoln logs, they'll stack them. Okay. Like 30 feet high. Yeah. And then they got these sprinklers up on top to help mature the wood. And so during summer months, it'll keep them wet and everything. And so they, they want, so you, you call it like drying, right? So yeah. you're kind of leaching out some of that sap. It's all, you know, it's, it's becoming a very dry, brittle wood. So they'll do that for like, two to three years. And then um, what happens is like, you know, you can imagine like the in interior stacks there, they are always, like they're always wet, right? And then the bottom few stacks are always the wettest. Yeah. And they get like black. And so La Pata Negra means the black foot. And so we started asking our cooperages to give us, we wanted, it started with an experiment. We wanted that like, that really um, more heavily aged, like kind of more broken down wood from the bottom of the stack, then they take that and then they remill it and then they start making their barrel, toasting it, bending it, putting the head on it, the hoops, everything. So we have the Pata Negra and they've, the first one showed great and so now it's become more of a part of our program. So we want specifically like that wood at the bottom of the stack that gets the most moisture, that, that kind of has the hardest time uh, maturing. Um, and so yeah, it's been little, little things like that. I mean, we've even got cooperages that will mill their wood and then right after milling they'll submerge it for two weeks in water to like try to leach out some more of those tannins Ooh. and then oh. they'll go back and then they'll stack them for two or three years and then they'll bring them into the cooperage and make the barrel two yeah, to three years so like yeah. the making of these things actually i wasn't well like some one of the shitty parts is like you know we could buy american oak barrels for 250 300 a barrel um you're not going to have the the aging uh, they're like literally they cut them they char them and they ship them they typically do those for uh, the spirits world yeah so like most whiskeys are they need to be in a char barrel and it can be from oak from anywhere but in America it's like you just have these companies just pumping out these crappy barrels that are going to be used one time really so you know whatever your classic say maker's mark and they're going to be filled and then tossed into a rick house for 5, 10, 20 years and just sit there untouched <sighs> Until finally they're like, okay, this rickhouse is matured. Let's pull it all out and get it, you know, bottled. Dang. But yeah, so that that's why I mean we've got Hungarian oak we've tried. It's okay. It's not not that great. But 
I mean, it's still French is French is the king. Yeah. Yeah. And when you were talking about this, like, so actually, you could play the uh, the video because just if for those that want to see the actual barrel that you were, we were talking about, La Pata Negra. Uh, La Negra, the black foot. This comes from the bottom of the stack as the oak is aging for 36 months. Special request we have from our barrel maker. And see, it's not even. So that color is like on the. Oh well, no. So then they then they remill it and sand it down. Yeah. So every every stave gets retouched. Got it. And part of that is so that they can like, you know, fit it properly. Um. So that like if you saw the the raw stave before it got remilled, it it's like black. Yeah. And it's at the bottom of the stack. Okay. Hence the name Blackfoot. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it was cool to like see because like at first like some might have been picturing that like the barrels are actually. Yeah. No, black, they, but that's like a. That's just cool the detail. Exterior. To know. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. But there's all sorts of shit they do. Like, they'll groove the inside of the staves to get more surface area. Yeah. So instead of being, like, ruffles, right? Ruffles have ridges. Ruffles do have ridges. So compare those to, like, regular lays. The ridges <laughs> allow for a lot more surface area. Am I wrong? I just, I love So you get I more flavor, your... you get more salt, that sort of shit, right? I like and, this. This yeah. is a good analogy. So they make barrels like ruffles that have more surface area. So if you want, like, that extra amount of oak yeah. in a shorter period of time, you can do that. I don't really like those, but they they work. Yeah, yeah. And so, as a lot of this, you're I I know that you're always like experimenting and stuff. It, it, would you say that that is like how it's happening every vintage? Like you don't have when it comes to the barrels and the aging and stuff. Do you think like every year you're kind of trying something new or a new barrel oh, yeah. or anything like that? Always. Like you're you're not like keeping something the same as well we keep every so vintage, like or? if i if i said when i first started like 20 years ago and then like to 15 years ago the way we've like we've evolved i mean there are some cooperages that we don't even use anymore that we we're using in the first couple of years because yeah. they've fallen off or we've you know been able to find and create barrels that work better for our program so it's always like a constant you know trying experimenting see what works best um and i think that you know that that continued evolution is what you should always be looking for. Um, and there's a lot of people in the wine business, very traditional industry, that are just like, this is my recipe, this is how I've done it since the beginning, and at some point, your consumer base is gonna completely change, what people's palate preferences are will change, and you end up with, like, kind of just being sidelined by the industry. Yeah. Because you always gotta progress. Um, so anyways, that's kinda how, how I look at it. But like, yeah, we always do experiments. Could be the pata negra, could be the grooves. Um, we've done like stave, uh, you know, interchanging staves. So you'll have like 50% American and 50% uh, uh, French in one barrel. Um, and that is something we've done for like whiskeys more than anything. It does okay for wine, but better for spirits. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, it's just like you have an idea, find somebody that'll help you, you know, make that dream come true. And then if it works, then you add more to your program of what worked and then eliminate stuff that wasn't working as well. So it's like, it's just this constant kind of evolution. Yeah. But if you're not fucking something up every year, you're not learning. I know you like, you like to fuck shit up. You gotta, you gotta make <laughs> mistakes. I mean, don't make them too big. Like, don't like, you know, don't make them too big. I'm just, I'm not going to go into detail. <laughs> don't make, they make, make yeah, you want. Hey, that's a good, that's a good entrepreneurship advice. All right. I'll say it in an entrepreneur way. Calculated yeah. risk. Yeah, yeah, there it okay. is, dude. You got it, That's dude, it. bro. Calculated risk. Like, well, like I said, like, but we... don't be a fucking pussy <laughs> and be like, oh, I'm, you know, I got like, I feel like sixty percent. This is a good idea. Yeah. And then, and then, like, everything matches up. All the data is telling you, yeah, do it. And then from that point on, it's like gut feel. Yeah. Don't just don't just sit on the pot. You got to take a shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> shit or get off the pot. That's it. Jump in. Oh man, I do like talking Dude, about barrels. Another, was gonna be fun, and I knew that saying. we'd be going forever. But you know what? Like all the all the analogies and like these tangents are like great. I like it. <laughs> all right, so I, that that was a fun talk about barrels. Yeah, yeah. And uh, well, hey, one last thing. Do you have anything when we were talking about how to start a winery, making winery stuff like that? People first starting out, low production. Like, do you have any advice on barrels? Because obviously they could be expensive. We just went over that. Like, if you're getting like twelve hundred dollars for a barrel, yeah, right. Um, Go with something you know ha has a good reputation, like yeah. the Cooperage with a good reputation. Um, and then from that point, if you're starting off with like, if you're starting off with four barrels, 
um, every one of those barrels should be different or slightly different. Okay. And then next year it's 20 barrels or whatever and just make it all an experiment. But don't go like too far. If you're that small in production, you don't want to have like two of your barrels be like super hardcore experiments that might, you know, screw up those those two barrels of wine. Yeah. So you want to make sure your risk is calculated in, in that regard. But you got to like try every every time you fill a barrel, it should be a different barrel until you find like the one that most complements the wine. And the problem is, it's like a multi-year project, right? Yeah. You try shit and you're like, okay, well, now I won't know what my next vision will yield until next year. Yeah. And that's that's it. <laughs> Slow process. All right, dude. Well, I, I'm sure we're, we'll be talking about barrels more and more. I'm sure. As we go to, there's just like so much, but oh, I see you looking at Oh, that's another thing. We changed all of ours to 53 gallons instead of 59. And why was that? Uh, partly surface area and partly uh, for interchanging between spirits and wine. And we can fit, it's like 20% more on a container coming from France. Yeah, by putting, le like having but smaller barrels. Having a slightly smaller barrel. Yeah. I mean, you're talking like, we, we cut off like six gallons. Dang. Yeah. Wow. Dude, there's you're just always like, you know, you're right. Always thinking, always, is that a calculated risk? What, I, what, what I, you did? I felt was like that, that wasn't much of a risk. <laughs> that was easy. But I, I mean, like, the cooperages were like, at first, the French cooperages were like, why would you change the barrel size? Yeah. Like, we're, because, well, we have all these reasons, but like, can't you just do that? And they're like, but it will change, uh, it will change the quality of the barrel. And you're like, uh. I'll let you know about that, sir. And then they sent it. They worked out great. <laughs> Can I just note your, like, I like it when you do your axes, bro. Like, <laughs> we might be doing uh, some some episodes where I'm going to require that you, like, keep one the of these. Whole, the whole episode. <laughs> the whole time. You're going to have to be French <laughs> or, uh, you know, your German accent. Your German accent that, like, tends to, like, sway into, like, Russian. Yeah. And then, that's yeah, the problem. And then, like, like, morphs into off. that. <laughs> Get into like all these Eastern European like lingos. All right, man. Well, that was like a good barrel talk. Yeah. All right. What's next? Let's, let's move on to the next subject. Let's talk about sayings because yeah. we've had a lot of those yeah, sayings yeah, yeah. in this whole episode. And um, put the shit back in the horse. Okay, with the shit back in the horse. Like honestly, like I, okay, like I get it. Like when you were talking about put the shit back. I mean, I get it. Um, but I just actually never heard that one really yeah i actually I or can you, you look said... up the the history of putting shit back in the horse <laughs> i mean i or have you saying... can't put the shit back in the horse because <laughs> i am curious where it came from like was yeah. this something in uh was this like a european thing a middle yeah. eastern thing or just like <laughs> you cannot put some shit back in the horse <laughs> uh, yeah we know have you tried Dude, the accents bro <laughs> wait who was that wait what was that what was that exit uh i think that was like southern france yeah <laughs> Southern France. <laughs> oh, dude, you're getting like, More like you're over, like over, truly like the, professional. The okay. Side, you know, getting the, so wait, closer like, to Spain. So, uh, yeah, okay. Those are the pompous. The like, pompous. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can it was like, so it's like Nice. Um, nice France. Ha -ha, ha -ha. <laughs> um, if you can't, I don't really know about asking, this. It says, yeah, oh, wait, yeah. what's done is done. Actually, and then I think there's this, uh, <laughs> we're looking it up right now, but it looks like, Joe, I think that's like, <laughs> <laughs> well, the funny thing is, you can't you can't undo what you have done. But it's like, but I didn't make the horse shit. Yeah. So I don't know. That's uh. Anyway, anyways. Okay. Let's I, get on to a few other ones. So we got. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I I found like um a good a good place was like uh, Grammarly, um. But looking up these things, uh, I got the first link on there. Art. Um. But okay. So I thought, break the ice. Yeah. And so let's go over the meaning. And like I, I was like wondering if you if you thought maybe you knew where where it came from, okay. So okay, yeah, yeah. So I'm not even I'm not even gonna guess what this came from, but yeah. So this is like <laughs> it's like to enter a conversation to like begin <gasps> something more of like camaraderie with a stranger. That's what I yeah, take yeah, it. Yeah. It's like there's an awkward moment where you're like, you know, how's the weather today where you live, and like. Like, yeah, like break, is that breaking that? Like you got to come out the gate though with something strong. It's like everybody talks about the weather or sports or whatever. It's like, yeah, to to break off a conflict uh, or commence a friendship, right? Yeah, so like so if I, it's if like I just fresh... met you, I'd be like, 
Oh yeah, what would you bring her? Did you shave today, or can you not grow facial hair? That is not. I don't think that's breaking <laughs> the ice, bro. I think you're like talking about. Um, you know, you know, I have had issues with that. Ever since you know, I was a late bloomer. So now we're talking. See, I just broke the ice. <laughs> I just broke the ice. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not like really like, I don't think we're in friendship mode. I think we're like, in, like you <laughs> dissed me. <laughs> All right, here's the origin. Yeah, yeah. Uh, back when road transportation was not developed, ships would be the only transportation and means of trade. Uh, at times, they'd get stuck during the winter because of ice formation. Then the receiving country would send small ships to break the ice. Ah, clear the way for the trade ships. All right. <laughs> So yeah. breaking the ice cleared the way for the friendship to evolve. I yeah. Guess. yeah. Uh, I mean. Interesting. Now I wonder who said it first. <laughs> like some drunk sailor in Denmark. He's like, ah, we weren't friends until tonight, but we broke, we the, broke ice. the ice. We broke the <laughs> ice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. How about uh, to butter someone up? Yeah. Butter me up. Yeah. Butter you up. It's like, you know, to to impress you to give you flattery let me let me see if i could if i could but if i'll like, I I see if i could butter you up for right now okay um gosh your hair is just such like an apex predator and i'd be like <laughs> like a cocaine you, bear i'd be like what do you want <laughs> why don't you just ask me flat out instead of trying to trying to butter me up <laughs> did you felt buttered I'm, do you like me calling it? You like to be called an apex predator, right? <laughs> the a- a- apex predator. <laughs> yeah. <that's... laughs> oh, man. Okay, so it's the the origin of that. So, dude, this this is actually interesting. This was a customary religious act in ancient Idi- India. The devout would throw butter balls at the statues of their gods to seek favor and forgiveness. Huh. Hmm. Interesting. So I always thought butter me up was more like a saying that was like sucking up to somebody to try to get what you want. But you're like literally it, it is just to seek favor. Which yeah, I guess could be flattery. like to get your to get your way. But yeah, or flattery. Yeah, to impress but it's also like that, like that thing of like but to impress good. someone too is kind of interesting, right? Because like yeah. that's like instead of yeah, because I actually thought that too, like the buttering up like I thought like someone's trying to butter you up to get something, but yeah. but this one actually sounds interesting that they're saying impress because I feel like that's like I just to get you. To, I guess you're trying to get Maybe. someone to like you, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think of like politicians, like yeah. you know, buttering well, everybody up. Yeah, this this not. Let's not get into that. Wait, what? You... <laughs> I mean, how many? I just want... How many tons of butter does Hillary Clinton have? Can we... Fucking donors. <laughs> Can't we? Just sitting there rubbing so, butter on George Soros. Oh, back. here's here's a good here, here, here here's a good next one for you. Bury the hatchet. <laughs> Why don't you just bury the hatchet, Joe? Uh, to stop conflict and make peace. With who? I'm I'm peaceful to almost with, everybody. Well, you know, with Hillary. Oh, with Hillary. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <It's your> <laughs> yeah. I, I actually I actually visited their like. I don't know what it was like this the Bill and Hillary Clinton Museum or whatever. I didn't go in, but it was in uh, Arkansas. Yes. I think in Fayetteville, somewhere there. So Rachel you and like, I are like, you like Arkansas. Rachel by the way. and I are in Arkansas <laughs> and and <laughs> Rachel's mom like fucking loves Hillary. Um but like, you know, so we always we always kind of make fun of her about it. Um but uh what happened was uh we stop in at this place and we're like going through like the yard, um, looking for bodies underground. Yeah. And and we with a metal detector, we couldn't find anything. So I don't think that they buried them there, but I don't I don't know where the Clintons typically bury their bodies. Um, oh my but gosh, we're gonna have to. It's burying the hatchet. <laughs> it's. <laughs> Why do you do this to me, man? <laughs> okay. Yeah. I got a selfie though, like in front of the house. It's like, yeah, what's up, Hillary? <laughs> Am I next? Well, we have the one here if you'd like to check it out. <laughs> so, Tell us stop, the origins. Just Tell stop. us the origins, Joe. <laughs> Am I sentencing us to death? <laughs> yeah. <we're> like. <laughs> All right. So th- <laughs> this one dates back to the early times of North America when the Puritans were in conflict with the Native Americans. When negotiating peace, the Native Americans would bury all of their hatchets, knives, clubs, and tomahawks. Weapons were literally buried and made inaccessible. Dang. Ah. 
That's a good. That's a good one. Bury the hatchet. He... Bury the hatchet and make peace. Yep. Yes, please. Uh, yeah, we'll think about that. I've uh, always found this next one interesting. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Yes. Yeah. I mean, if you're gonna do that, <laughs> at least at least leave him on like the firehouse steps. <laughs> Just throw it out. It's rude. <laughs> <laughs> on the firehouse steps, dude? Like, what are we, are the 50s or is that, something? Is, is like, that what they used to do? Yeah, dude, but I don't think, like, I mean, I hope, I don't know, I just, you know, there's Hopefully adoption. we're better than yeah, that yeah, I don't think, yeah. yeah, just, yeah. I wonder when the last time somebody just, like, left their baby on the firehouse steps was. Does that still happen? I don't know. Uh, Grace was asking me this morning, like, when was the last time somebody got kidnapped in St. Helena? And I was like, well, I'm pretty I, sure. I, I, <laughs> I was like, I'm pretty sure it's been never. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just got wind of art. Like, <laughs> He's like we're the... always like, what the fuck? There's no safe place. Like this guy, <laughs> like, we're talking about kidnap. I mean, I thought the I thought the poop intro was bad, and then we were getting away from poop, and then we're just like, <laughs> yeah, trash and talking and, 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 <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, not trash talking. Don't we're yeah. All right, so th- kill us. at least at least that one like really <laughs> that one is self explanatory, just like you know. Um, yeah, like you don't know, get rid of valuable things yeah. along with the unnecessary ones. And, yeah, and I think, and I kind of knew about this one too about like you know, well, I mean, I didn't so in the early 1500s, but um, that craziness because that that was actually happening for a long time though. That whole like taking a bath, well, I yeah. guess like back then, you know, we went to take a bath like once a year. Yeah, and that whole thing of that the the male, or I guess, or like. In the family, like the, you know, you'd have like the male would take the bath first, the uh, father, and then everybody, and then, would... and then the, and then I think then it was what was what it? Let's see the, because then it was the mother, the females, and then the leaving the children are last. Huh. I wonder what in that's the all dirty about. water. Yeah. By that time, the baby. Then... By the time the babies got in, the water was clouded with filth. The poor mothers had to take extra care that their babies were not thrown out with the bathwater. Wow. Dude, like, they had to... Well, you know, like... So they had to just make sure, though, like, that that was, like, something that was happening. It was, like, everyone's done with the bath. The bathwater got thrown out, and they're I like, take, take, are we missing somebody? <laughs> I take two showers we... a day. Could you imagine, like, oh, it's my annual bath. One, <laughs> two... Three. Oh, dude! Like, go, go get the go baby. Check the street. Where you threw, threw the I know. Water out. Oh, not again. God. Yeah. Gosh, Debra. But the, <laughs> I don't know it, why, Debbie. <laughs> Debra. Uh, um. Okay, and then okay, we'll we'll, we'll end with this one because uh, this is your favorite because you said this shit a lot and I swear when you say this, come on, you know the reaction you get. You still get like with soup to nuts. You, you, love, you love soup to nuts. I, I never even knew that it was like something people don't say anymore. So I'm going to let you take this one because no, you know you all me, about it. Why don't you tell me the, the what happens when I say that to people? I feel like people are like, yeah, what the fuck is he saying? <laughs> With this smile, I'm going to keep this smile on. Soup to nuts. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. Okay. That's, <laughs> it's like from the beginning. I eat like, soup. You know, from the, <laughs> the starting point, the, the very first starting point to the very final point. Yeah. Everything, yeah. Because they used to start their meals eating soup. That was the first course, and then you'd end with nuts. Yeah. Start to finish. So start to finish. Yeah. The whole kitten caboodle. The whole kitten caboodle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like going over these sayings, and I think it's like something that I don't know, man. We'll we'll continue because it's good to know. Where these things come I mean, from? You, I'd you rather these anything? be in our in our lexicon than like yeah. you know the shit the kids are saying. Like, bruh. Oh my god. Dab me up, bruh. Dab me up, bruh. I know we we did that. <laughs> that was a good po- that was that was a good thing to go over I know. though. Because like, and I, I know. Like, are it, you guys it, trying to talk so nobody can understand dude, you? Dude, really? I think we're gonna have to keep bringing that one up because it keeps evolving and there's like new stuff yeah. going on. And like, I need to find out from you. Dude, how do you communicate? It's like yeah. a different language. It is totally different language. Yeah, that Gen Z language. I I did have a we had like a little party this weekend. Yeah. Um, it was like 10, 11 year olds. Yeah. Like you know, with Bish and uh, and yeah, they were like some of they're they're like in the incubation stage of like becoming uh cool, um 
hormone driven teenagers, right? Yeah. They're like preteen, but you can tell like shit's just starting to ramp up right now. Yeah. And they're they're hilarious to watch. They're just like wild animals. But uh but yeah, they're they're trying to use like they're starting to get the little bits of this this new language that some dumbass 15-year-old created <laughs> um or a group of dumbass 15-year-olds created. Um and uh and so they're trying to like use it, like use the cool slang. It's just hilarious. They're like yeah. they're still like children, right? <laughs> You still look at them like between eight and like eleven. They're kind of like, they're just like kids. Yeah. And and then you see this kind of shit. Like really, I gotta go through this shit again. Yeah. You're lucky. Yeah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right, should we get into some horrible bosses? Let's do horrible bosses. Yeah. Yeah. Let's jump in. All right. Let's jump into it. You want me to read this one? Yeah. Hit it. Okay. Again, I do want to say, please, send us your stories of horrible bosses so we can criticize them and learn how to be better bosses. Yeah, and let's, you know, let's Let's blow it up. It's all uh, confidential, by the way. All Uh, confidential. Yeah. uh, I guess unless you want Joe to blow it up, you could just, like, read it. You'd email to horrible.bosses at coppercane.com. Um, so pretty self-explanatory. If you don't know how to spell, because you're Gen Z. Oh, we put it on the screen. Okay, it's on the screen. Got yeah. it. And if you can't read, then <laughs> you know we uh, we said it. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, horrible, but make it weird. All right. <laughs> uh, so just thought I'd share my horrible boss story. I worked at a restaurant where my boss was basically a micromanaging weirdo, always yelling, always complaining, and always making direct rude comments. When we would clear off food from the table, he would bring them to the washing area. He could be found there always with a negative comment, like, why are you so slow today? Did you go out raging or <laughs> you're not smiling enough? Have you always been so sad looking? <laughs> I was always smiling, by the way. Um, he was so rude, but the weird part is he would grab the plates from me that still had good portions of food on them, acting like he had, uh, acting like he had to help me because I was slacking. And then I would see him eat pieces of the food off the plate. So that's fucked up. <laughs> I even saw him take a half a chicken once to the back. I thought he was getting paid. I thought he was getting paid enough, but it was so just so weird. One of my friends there got scolded uh, by him for not uh, oh, scraping. That was a typo. For not Sorry. scraping every little bit of the ketchup out of a tin dispenser at the end of the night to save for the next day. He said, we are a business of pennies. So he took over scraping it. Okay. Uh, but while he was scraping, my friend saw him lick the spoon, then continue scraping. Uh, Ugh. Oh, what the It heck? was so disgusting. I didn't stick around much longer after hearing that. Just weird. There's some weird people out there, man. I don't like... If I was in a restaurant and I saw some shit like that, I'd be like... Ugh. Dude, these things are like I mean, making we, me we like... We got a restaurant and like... No, that's you got to be like clean on everything. That's... Yeah. That's I have just... heard that phrase before, though. We are a business of pennies, or about pennies, in yeah. the restaurant world. Yeah. And it's like, I totally get it, but like that's not like, dude, there's a limit, okay? Like, charge an extra 50 cents for your plates rather than, you know, picking the food off or whatever. It is. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I mean, I, and yeah, and I've heard that phrase, too. It's just that, I mean, yeah, it fits into horrible bossing because, like, Obviously, it, it sounds like this He's dude had some issues, and yeah. he was like an asshole and stuff. But the odd thing is, is that he also, like, he had some also like really underlining issues, like with the food shit. Like, I don't get, like, that's just weird. Like, you why was he? You can't fix crazy. Like, what was he doing? Like, do you think he was like couldn't help himself? Like, maybe it was like some kind of weird, like, I don't know. Don't you think he Ish? he probably like he has like a little man syndrome? Yeah. You know, like, he's, well, he's got to talk down to people to make himself feel big, where he actually doesn't have, like, a good self-esteem. Yeah. But it comes across as, like, a big ego. <laughs> you know those people, right? <laughs> They're so fucking annoying. Yeah, he's he just, like, feels so shitty about himself, and he's just trying to... Yeah, he's propping himself no, up. By, like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so um, how would I respond yeah, how to how would this? you deal? how would you deal with it? If I was an employee? Yeah. Go to uh, HR. I'd probably, I'd probably quit. <laughs> yeah, I'd probably, probably have quit. a few choice Just give words it up. for him. Yeah. Um, would you like? I don't know. Would you like give him like a a gift certificate to like get some food or no? Um, I, might, I might, I might like you know, something funny like uh, 
take a piece of that chicken and like <laughs> spit on it, pee on it. Maybe fight for <laughs> it. Bring it over. Like just for the fuck of it. Like just you see it, and then it. you try to like see if you like, those are my see leftovers. how dedicated he is to yeah to it. <laughs> All, All right, right, dude, that was a good one. That's uh, yeah, yeah, yeah it's weird, that. horrible, horrible, make it weird. Horrible dot bosses at coppercane.com. We will see you all next time. Thanks for joining in. Let us know your thoughts and yes. whatever you want us to talk about. Adios, peace. <laughs>